Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today, we are going to refurbish and service a NAD, NAD, audio amplifier. A lovely amplifier, a lovely piece of kit, and they've got some fantastic functions, uh, such as soft clipping to stop drunk people from parties whacking the volume up and blowing up your speakers and that kind of stuff. So we'll get into this. We're going to ultimately replace a lot of the capacitors uh, inside this guy to make sure that any capacitors that might have dried out are sorted and then we'll be able to hand it back to its owner happy in the knowledge that this will be continuing its service for many years into the future. Without further ado, let's get into the detail. What we're going to do is we're going to check the ripple voltages that are coming off of these two capacitors here. So we have the oscilloscope, oscilloscope. we have the oscilloscope set up and uh, the top is off this so clearly there are live cables 240 volts in here and actually the amplifier itself runs off of about 125 volts as well. So um, there we go, power is on. Uh, if you're going to do this, please make sure you're very careful with mains voltages being on this board. Now, that said, what we need to do is we, ne we need to have a look at the ripple on the power supply. And the plan ultimately will be to replace those capacitors, but it'll be interesting to have a look at before and after. And, um, and I have quite a lot of other capacitors that uh, we need to replace on this PCB as well. So if we just uh, have a quick look at the circuit diagram for this bad boy, what we've got here is a bridge rectifier and then these two big capacitors that you could see, the 6,800 microfarad capacitators just here. Um, and then out of here we get a plus a positive voltage and negative voltage and the middle of those two capacitors is tied down to ground. And let's have a look at the output, uh, the plus and the minus side of the voltages that are coming out of that uh, of that system there. Let's just have a quick look and see what the ripple looks like. So now we're on ground with the crocodile clip from the scope probe and then what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at uh, the positive ripple and as you can see on the scope screen here we do have a little bit of positive ripple that's 50 millivolts per division there um, so we're looking at about 100 millivolts of ripple and uh, noise on the positive and then if we put it on the negative just wait for that to come in yeah it looks very similar another 100 millivolts of ripple uh, coming from the negative side of the power supply so uh, it looks as though those capacitors are working okay um, it would be nice if that was a little bit better but uh, not bad not bad Anyway, we're going to go ahead and replace those capacitors because we've bought some nice new ones and the old ones are a little bit cream crackered. 
So uh, we'll bust the soldering iron out, we'll chuck in some new power supply capacitors. At the same time, we're likely to go ahead and replace quite a few of the other capacitors that are on this, uh, on this board. Another thing that's fun to do with these amplifiers is if you plug into one of the channels uh, an oscilloscope and get it set up so that it's reasonably sensitive and uh, if we turn up the volume as we turn up the volume you can see the noise level increases now uh, here's the cool thing if we take one of these which is just a little phono blanking plug I've just connected the center pin to the outside and we plug that into the CD input like that in fact I have two of them here and boom there you go you can see that's unplugged and that's plugged in you can see even if I turn the volume right up to the maximum level on this amplifier that there's very little internal noise and bearing in mind we're looking at 20 millivolts per division so that's 20 40 so about 40 millivolts of noise so I knew this uh, beer brewing pot would come in handy one day <laughs> never throw anything away uh, because what this does is it holds this amplifier shell up just perfectly so I can get my hand in underneath to access those capacitors and the soldering iron on top of it now the other thing you should consider to do if you look here at the uh, DVM you will see that there's still nearly 14 volts in that capacitor nearly 14 volts in that capacitor so clearly it's unplugged and not running but those caps are still holding a bit of charge so just be aware of that it's not mains voltage it's not going to kill you but it has the potential if you were to short it against other components to cause problems with pieces of silicon and that kind of stuff okay let's get some of these caps replaced just uh, a little bit of fresh solder on the iron and then um, hopefully these caps aren't glued down as well I guess we're gonna find out in a few seconds all right good stuff I can feel it coming away in my hand and I'm pretty sure there you go I'll give you a we'll, we'll turn it over and we'll have a look and see uh, see what's going on but yeah okay so you can see that those caps have been glued in place because they're quite big and heavy so when you're transporting this around it could potentially wiggle around and cause problems anyway good news one cap out we have some big fat hairy jacklins here so we're going to put those in place great news so when you're when you're inserting your replacement capacitor clearly you need to make sure that the polarization is correct with these electrolytics so this is where the new capacitor is going to live right here in place of the old guy and all we've got to do now is get a dab of solder on those terminals there and we will continue this process for most of the capacitors on this PCB A nice flowing joint like that here they are these two guys here and here lovely we'll just uh, plug it in switch it on remember everything's live again it's got mains electricity in here so be careful and uh, let's just check those uh, check that power supply 39 volts DC on that terminal 39 volts DC on that terminal so 40 volts absolutely spot on and that should be nice and clean we'll check that with the scope in a few minutes and there we have it lots of old capacitors replaced with spanking new ones look at those beautiful lowest ESR caps there so whilst cleaning this up another little problem I've noted is that this knob here sometimes grips and sometimes doesn't it's quite simple it's just got a little split symbol a uh, split symbol a split spindle and that spindle has splines on it 
uh, that should engage inside here. But obviously someone's got a little heavy handed with it at some point because as you can see, the split has closed up. So all we've got to do is just get a little tiny fine jewelry type screwdriver in there, open that split up very carefully and that should give it enough grip or purchase on this here so that uh, it repairs it all and everything sinks nicely. Okay, that should do it. Just give it a little bit of separation and then fit the knob back in place. There we go, all sorted. Lovely. Okay, so this is quite encouraging. If we just check the power supply, and this is the positive side of the power supply. And as you can see there, we've actually halved the amount of noise on the positive side of the power supply. And this is the negative side of the power supply. And again, we're about half the amount of noise that we were. So the power supply is definitely looking better. So down in the bottom left hand corner of the scope display, you should see there then that uh, we're five millivolt, five millivolts per division. And we've got about 10 millivolts there. So about half the amount of noise than we were before. And again, actually this is quite impressive. So I've put um, some blanking plugs in to the CD input, set everything on CD input. Uh, I'm looking at the output of speaker A here. And if we look at the scope screen, there it is. And what I'll do, and this is again, this is on five millivolts per division. This is a really very small amount of noise here hardly anything. You'd never hear that on a speaker, I don't think. And I'll turn the volume up to maximum. Look at that. Hardly any change. And in fact, there's a little bit of crackle and pop, I would say, that seems to have, uh, that seems to have gone away. So, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that's actually really helped. Whether or not you'll actually hear the difference is another thing. Okay, so just looking at the service manual for this and it's suggesting that we should check the center voltage um, of the uh, drive transistors. So again, what you do is you short out the inputs, you put a meter across the speaker connectors and then what you need to do is switch your scope into DC coupled uh, so you can get a DC reading. So right now we're in AC coupled mode. If I hit the button, go to ground, and you can see there that we are uh, pretty much knob on the zero volts. And then, bonk, that is our center voltage. And our center voltage should be better than 30 millivolts. And actually, we're less than 10 millivolts. This thing is looking absolutely spot on. So we'll give it a clean bill of health. One of the things that I wanted to make you aware of is that the two transistors that are in this amplifier, the main drive transistors, this guy here and this guy here, are in what's called a complementary push-pull or class AB push-pull pair configuration. And what this does is one of the transistors will drive the plus 12 volt side of things whilst the other one will drive the minus 12 volt side of things. And in this configuration it's high, it's very linear um, and so you get a beautiful sine wave response for a beautiful sine wave input and they're very quick to respond in certainly terms of audio uh, frequencies. So you get a really nice sound out of this type of configuration of amplifier. It's very simple, but it really works a treat. Fantastic. So clearly um, the final step is to check and test that everything's actually up and running properly. Um, 
and I'm quite pleased this seems to sound absolutely magnificent and with the volume all the way up you you can't you can't hear anything coming from these speakers at all nothing not a thing so I'm pretty pleased this is running beautifully um, here's a scope. I was going to put a, a sine wave through. I don't actually have a sine wave generator. The closest I could get was my iPad. <laughs> it's a bit loud. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been a bit of fun, a bit of education. Um, yeah, I enjoyed doing this repair and restoration job. So, uh, We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget, share, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Take care. Bye for now.